We're taking the instruction book one page at a time. It's turning the page, so this will be the visual to go along with the... Um, Keep the leg that you're working on, you're going to extend and you're going to adapt to about this side. This, the other knee, you're going to keep bent. Now you find your bony landmark, which is the ASIS, and then you're going to find the insertion of the psoas onto the femur. You can put one hand underneath and loosen the hamstrings a little bit. And then with the heel of your hand, you go from the bony landmark and just kind of slide in to that insertion. And you can do what I call like a CPR movement and pulse, deeply pulse onto that insertion, hold, go back and, and uh, loosen the hamstrings some more, and pulse. And you can do this uh, for as long as you need to. And uh, a good, another good uh, visual aid is if you can see that their foot is um, going up and down, like they're pressing on the gas, you know you've got the right, the right muscle, the right bone. This is a lot more gentle than what's taught. Right, and it's less invasive than going through the abdomen and moving all of the viscera over to work the psoas muscle, which is commonly taught in most schools. Um, we have uh, seen a lot of clients with trauma and physical injury because uh, therapists have not always done it um, gently and um, incorrectly. So that is one way to uh, address the issues of the psoas. Now I'm going to show you a series of stretches that you can do. Now on page three, I'm going to demonstrate some of the stretches that are in the instruction manual. Um, after you have worked the insertion of the psoas on the, on the femur, you can then take your client into a series of stretches. And because they're on the wedgie, you get and they're suspended off the table just enough, you get a greater range of motion, and your stretches are, are more they're beneficial. You can um, get a, not only a greater range of motion, but you get a deeper stretch. So we're going to take the, uh, the leg and we're going to stretch the hamstrings. Kind of, I pulse. I take my hand and I kind of pulse into the um, into that ball and socket of the hip. Come back up and do another stretch. And if you have a client who is particularly tight on their hamstrings, you have them take the index finger of the side of the body that they're working on, that you're working on, and you have them find the sinkhole right above their lip, and they're going to push it and irritate it a little bit. That's governing vessel number 26 in Chinese uh, medicine, which is, I call it like a reboot switch of the body, and you can actually get your client to give you almost four inches more than what they're able to do normally and without having them you know feel a lot of pain or it just really uh, facilitates your stretches more all right then we're going to do a nice little twist this way you don't force it you're not going to um, if you feel resistance you just you stop right there and you let the body tell you its boundaries and you respect that and pulse it again into the bone socket and now we're going to go up and over and you're up and over we're going to work this is the piriformis stretch I usually um, you place your hand over here by the ASIS joint uh, again you go up and over the bony landmark there and when you're finished you're going to make um, put their knee into your elbow and make a nice number four that way and again place your hand on the ASA uh, landmark gently lay your hand on the knee and just kind of rock and you'll get a nice little stretch that way take the knee, the, I mean the ankle and kind of go down a little bit further and that completes the first um, side of stretches and uh, they can 
lay there for a few minutes before you go on to the other side, or you can just immediately start the routine on the other side of the body. Someone's stronger on one side. Right. If you have a client who um, uh, has maybe one leg that is longer than the other or is suffering from scoliosis, usually you can determine that um, they have are uh, more dominant on one side of their body than the other. And you can check to see if the psoas is stronger on one side than the other by having them resist you. As you go toward their feet, they're going to push their knee toward their head. And then you can check on the other side as well. And if they are uh, weaker on one side than the other, there are a series of stretches in the book and I mean uh, isometric exercises that they can do that will help strengthen the psoas on that side of their body. And here she has locked her arm and she's uh, resisting her own knee. And you do that five times, a set of five, five times a day for about two weeks. And then you can build it up to seven and then ten. And that will help bring balance back to the uh, psoas. Now that we've covered the stretches from page three to seven, I want to show you um, how to help your client do um, the pelvic tilts. Have your client bend their knees. And while they're on the wedge, tell them push to push your hands into the table with their back. Because many times when you say pelvic tilt, they'll go the opposite way. But when you want them to start out with, you want them to push your hands into the table with their back. And keep the shoulders relaxed and down. And you can hold that three to five seconds or even longer. And then they have them go the other direction. Now, you can also um, tell them, and you can facilitate this, you remove the wedge, have them lay on their side, bring the knee up, and they can do uh, this stretch and have them drop their shoulder to the table. And sometimes they'll have a, a spontaneous re uh, re release in the SI joint. Also, on the next page, on page uh, 9, we have areas where you can treat the sciatic nerve in the piriformis. By holding the knee as they lay on their side to keep the, the, the uh, bottom leg straight, you're going to hold the knee up and kind of rest it against yourself. And you can massage and work the area around the sacrum where all of the uh, ligaments and, and tendons are attaching. You can um, by lifting their leg up just a little bit, you can really get in to where the piriformis and sciatic nerve are running together out of the sacrum and down the leg. It's usually a hot spot. And um, you don't have to uh, dig and hurt, but by holding it just enough for, for a little while, you can really uh, make it feel better in just a few moments. And then you will also repeat this on the other side of the body. And uh, see, have them turn again onto their back. Can replace the wedge. And then have them put their bottoms of their feet together and do what we call the, the butterfly. And they can rock themselves back and forth, not using their leg muscles, but using their hands. They can uh, do a nice stretch in the abductors and in the lower back as well. And then slowly slide the feet forward, keep rocking, and you can get a greater stretch all through the, um, the pelvic floor and the abductors there. And that completes the routine for the table. And now we will show you how you can use it for clients when they want to sit at a computer desk for any length of time in their car, basically using it in, in all forms of transportation and sitting on, in office furniture. Sitting can be a real big problem for 
many, many people that travel. And the reason for that is um, some of the seats dip in the middle, the bucket seats, or they're just really soft. And the way our anatomy is, is we sit on um, the sit bones or the ischial tuberosity, and there's literally a space under the coccyx. Right between, there's just a, a small space between the end of the, the tailbone and the seat that you're sitting on. Now, back in about 40, 50 years ago, a lot of the seats were made with a small rise in the middle. You've seen old farm tractor seats. I've seen like old secretarial furniture. Flat wooden chair has that little hump, that little rise in the middle. Well, that was filling in the gap. And so what we're doing now with the sacro wedgie is basically going back to the concept of creating a level plane. It's all, some therapists even say it's like having a third sit bone. So this is a very important part of getting our alignment back balanced again. You can lie on the sacro wedgie and that's where gravity kind of helps the body balance and then the, and that's, that's making the correction. And sitting is preventing the imbalance from happening again. So, I mean, I always take it on the plane. It's in the car. It's going to be at the... Um, at my desk or, or wherever. It's just, if I'm going to be sitting for any length of time, um, this is a lot more comfortable for me, but I've been using it 20 years too. So, so whenever you sit, it's going to be just, just filling in this space, as you can see, and it's going to be stopping that drop from happening. So what you would do is just put the sacro wedgie flat in the seat. Now since I'm kind of short too, I'm also going to put something under my feet to raise my legs just a little bit, my knees. So you just want to sit on it, it's right in the middle. Put something under, the, this really isn't quite high enough. You really want to try to get the back of your leg almost off of the chair. And that in turn keeps the posture up, keeps the spine from pushing the sacrum down in the middle. And this is where a lot of people get in trouble on a long trip is just with just gravity. Gravity's going to fill in a hole. And it's your body that's just dropping in that dip in the seat. So what we're doing now is just filling in the gap, stopping the drop, um, put a book under your feet if you're short, and get your knees picked up a little bit. And uh, you, can, you can sit for hours, you can travel for hours. Uh, it's not going to let you slump because you really feel it if you start to drop and slump. So it does make you really sit up straight. You stay a lot more alert if you're driving on a long trip. So it's a very valuable tool to have for self-care, for prevention, for the massage therapist to use as a tool. We're, we're very fortunate that, that um, quite a few therapists are now using it, using it in their practice and um, for themselves as well. We really do stress the self-care and that's what we teach in a workshop too is the self-care part of this for the professional and also how you can use it as a tool working with your clients. So thank you.